You're listening to the A to Z English podcast. Hey, everybody. Uh, welcome back to Short Stories A to Z. Uh, this is uh, Jack. I'm Jack, and uh, I'm flying solo today. Uh, it is just me, and I'm going to uh, read a new story for you. Um, in our last episode of Short Stories A to Z, we read the Aesop's Fables. And those were, I got some feedback from students that they, the stories were a little bit too easy, um, or at least there weren't many questions that students had. So as I read the, this story, I want you to, you can go to the website, go to our homepage, a to Z English podcast.com. A to Z English podcast.com. And I can even put it right here. Go to A to Z English podcast.com and slash episodes. And you can find all of our episodes on this page. And uh, you can also go to just our homepage. If you just get rid of that, just go to a to z English podcast.com and you can hit the WhatsApp button and you can join our WhatsApp group. And in our WhatsApp group, I ask students to give me feedback. So listen to the story. Um, if you have questions about it or you have a comment that you would like to make, uh, write it in the, the WhatsApp group or, or record it with your voice and upload the message to the WhatsApp group. Uh, in the chat, I will re reply, and I will even um, talk about your your questions or your comments on the next podcast. So today, there are no comments uh, from the first episode, but maybe you will have some questions or comments about this episode. And we're going to read the story called How the Camel Got His Hump. And these are very faint. This is a classic story by Rudyard, Rudyard Kipling, that is the name of the author, Rudyard or Rudyard Kipling. Um, let me see, what else do we need to address before we do the story? Um, oh yeah, I also will have a transcript available. So if you go to episodes, um, so you go to our, our webpage, you open up the episodes and then you click on the episode you will find a transcript of the story there in PDF form. So there will be a PDF file with this story uh, available and you can just download it or keep it on your phone or look at it. I also will have the subtitles. That's what I've got right here. These are the subtitles of the story. So I'm going to read the story so you can listen to it. You can read along if you're watching it on YouTube. And if you're listening to the podcast, then just get the transcript and you can follow along that way. And again, just make notes. If you have questions, um, ask me in the group, the WhatsApp group chat. So let's get started. How the camel got his hump. Now this is the next tale and it tells how the camel got his big hump. In the beginning of years, when the world was so new and all, and the animals were just beginning to work for man, there was a camel. And he lived in the middle of a howling desert because he did not want to work. And besides, he was a howler himself. So he ate sticks and thorns and tamarisks and milkweed and prickles. Most excruciating idol. And when anybody spoke to him, he said, humph, just humph and no more. Presently, the horse came to him on Monday morning with a saddle 
on his back and a bit in his mouth and said, Camel, oh camel, come out and trot like the rest of us. Humph, said the camel. And the horse went away and told the man. Presently, the dog came to him with a stick in his mouth and said, Camel, oh camel, come and fetch and carry like the rest of us. Humph, said the camel. And the dog went away and told the man. Presently, the ox came to him with the yoke on his neck and said, Camel, oh camel, come and plow like the rest of us. Humph, said the camel. And the ox went away and told the man. At the end of the day, the man called the horse and the dog and the ox together and said, 303, I'm very sorry for you with the world so new and all, but that humph thing in the desert can't work or he would have been here by now. So I am going to leave him alone and you must work double time to make up for it. That made the three very angry with the world so new and all. And they held a palaver and an indaba and a punchayet and a powwow on the edge of the desert. And the camel came chewing on milkweed, most excruciating idol, and laughed at them. Then he said, humph, and went away again. Presently, there came along the jinn in charge of all deserts, rolling in a cloud of dust. Jinns always travel that way because it is magic. And he stopped to palaver and powwow with the three. Jinn of all deserts, said the horse, is it right for anyone to be idle with the world so new and all? Certainly not, said the jinn. Well, said the horse, there's a thing in the middle of your howling desert and he's a howler himself with a long neck and long legs. And he hasn't done a stroke of work since Monday morning. He won't trot. Woo, said the gin whistling. That's my camel for all the gold in Arabia. What does he say about it? He says, humph, said the dog, and he won't fetch and carry. Does he say anything else? Only humph, and he won't plow, said the ox. Very good, said the jinn. I'll humph him if you will kindly wait a minute. The jinn rolled himself up in his dust cloak and took a bearing across the desert and found the camel most excruciatingly idle, looking at his own reflection in a pool of water. My long and bubbling friend, said the jinn, what's this I hear of your doing no work? with the world so new and all. Humph, said the camel. The jinn sat down with his chin in his hand and began to think a great magic. While the camel looked at his own reflection in the pool of water. You've given the three extra work ever since Monday morning. 
all on account of your excruciating idleness, said the djinn. And he went on thinking magics with his chin in his hand. Humph, said the camel. I shouldn't say that again if I were you, said the djinn. You might say it once too often. Bubbles, I want you to work. And the camel said, humph, again. But no sooner had he said it than he saw his back that he was so proud of, puffing up and puffing up into a great big lolloping humph. Do you see that, said the djinn? That's your very own humph that you've brought upon your very own self by not working. Today is Thursday, and you've done no work since Monday when the work began. Now you are going to work. How can I, said the camel, with this humph on my back? That's made a purpose, said the djinn, all because you missed those three days. You will be able to work now for three days without eating because you can live on your humph. And don't you ever say, I never did anything for you. Come out of the desert and go to the three and behave. Hump for yourself. And the camel humped himself, humph and all, and went away to join the three. And from that day to this, the camel always wears a hump. We call it a hump now, not to hurt his feelings. But he has never yet caught up with the three days that he missed at the beginning of the world. And he has never yet learned how to behave. And here's a poem that is written in the story. This is the poem. The camel's hump is an ugly lump, which well you may see at the zoo. But uglier yet is the hump we get from having too little to do. Kitties and grown-ups, too ooh-ooh. If we haven't enough to do ooh-ooh, we get the hump, camellia's hump the hump that is black and blue. We climb out of bed with a frowsly head and a snarly, yarly voice. We shiver and scowl, and we grunt and we growl at our bath and our boots and our toys. And there ought to be a corner for me, and I know there is one for you. When we get the hump, Camellia's hump, the hump that is black and blue. The cure for this ill is not to sit still or froust with a book by the fire, but to take a large hoe and a shovel also and dig till you gently perspire. And then you will find that the sun and the wind and the gin of the garden too have lifted the hump, the horrible hump, the hump that is black and blue. I get it as well as you, ooh, ooh, if I haven't enough to do, ooh, ooh. We all get hump, camellia's hump, kitties and grown ups too. So there you go. That is a poem at the end of the story. Um, and that is the story of how the camel got his hump. And so 
I'm sure you probably have a lot of questions for me about this story. So I look forward to your comments in the WhatsApp uh, chat room. Um, you can also contact us on, you can uh, talk to us in Telegram. We have a chat room in Telegram. If you don't like WhatsApp, you can use Telegram. But uh, yeah, I look forward to hearing from you. This is uh, Short Stories A to Z, episode number two. And please share your comments and your, ask your questions in our WhatsApp group or Telegram group. And I will see you next time. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.